being said, if single people are watching this, what I don't want this to do is lead to bitterness. Where we're, where we're just so angry at married people because of the ways that they may, they may sin against us or not, or be inconsiderate of us or not even care to know our struggles, that we attack them because that's not right either. And just as when I was younger, I was not doing a good job of considering my married friends and the, the, the demands that marriage took on their time. I, I, just, I just don't want that to, to be something that we make excuses for. Let's all of us consider other people who are in different life circumstances. I just want us as the church to be you know, loving one another, considering one another. Considering one another is more important than ourselves. So if you're single, don't get bitter uh, and recognize this, that the Lord knows and we have a high priest who is sympathetic with our weaknesses, right? And one of the points I like to make to people is Jesus forsook, he forsook earthly marriage looking forward to an eternal marriage. And here's, here's the theology. The theology is I'm still getting married. I'm going to be in the wedding feast of the Lamb as a participant, not an observer. I am going to participate in an eternal marriage. So Ephesians 5 talks about the mystery of marriage. It talks about how the bride uh, is, is the church and then Christ is the groom and, and earthly marriage is pointing forward to that thing. And that means that marriage is holy and it is and it is something designed by God for an incredibly important purpose. But not everyone on earth needs to be married. They really don't. In fact, Paul actually said, I wish that you could be as I am. And he was single. And your identity, if you're a Christian, better be in Christ, not in who has or who has not married you. Jesus forsook earthly marriage because he was anticipating an eternal one. And if I never get married, you know what? I'm going to be just fine. I still have Jesus.